Hello, I'm Michael, and on July 3rd, 2019, I published a video titled Linux Every Day. And in that uh, discussion, I revealed how you could use Linux to do web browsing, edit documents, track your photos and files through a listing of your files in a file explorer type situation, how you can move from Windows to Linux in a very straightforward way. So that was my first ever um, description through video of how to do that process. And it revealed that you can use Linux in the same simple way that you can use Microsoft Windows. In today's discussion, we're going to go on the far opposite side of that, where we're going to talk about how Linux is applicable to software developers. There are numerous great videos on that topic. What I look at is the big picture with Linux and how it empowers the developer, empowers the people that want to manifest and bring about greater transformation in society and in the total existence. So we're talking about research institutions, government labs, we're talking about engineers, we're talking about scientists that are looking at a variety of things, we're talking about people with really good and deep technical experience and expertise who apply their time to Linux, whether they do it as individuals or as part of open source divisions of companies, and they make Linux a reality. And so the big picture for Linux is that it is a democratized technology environment that has no barriers for anyone to get involved and to learn and to apply it and to learn it. You see, in the commercial software world and commercial technology world, no one is going to give you the secret of how to become better than they are. No one is going to give you the secret of how to become better than they are. You are not going to know how to make a better version of Xbox or the Xbox setup than Microsoft. You are not going to make a better version of the video game technology that we call DirectX than Microsoft. If we're talking about Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, Microsoft is not going to give you the keys of how to make a better version of Word, a better version of Excel, or a better version of PowerPoint. Dare say they're not going to give you the keys of how to make a better version of Outlook. Just not going to happen. And that is how you end up in a situation where you cannot learn how to do those expert level things that you might see take place in Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint. But in the Linux world, you have LibreOffice. And LibreOffice does many of the same things as Microsoft Office. And because the code is open and open source, you can actually learn how a word processor, a spreadsheet, and a presentation software program is actually put together. And maybe there's a genius or a prodigy out there whether where you live or some far field, some far place, somewhere, wherever it is, because the internet brings everybody together, that genius, that prodigy, can make a much better version of that word processor or that video editing software or that graphics editing software, and it really just blows everybody's mind and ushers in a new level of innovation and possibility for everyone. That is the general promise of open source and open technology. But I don't go so aspirational in this discussion and what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you the everyday. I'm going to show you the ordinary. And as we walk through the ordinary in a Linux desktop environment, we begin to see how we can put Windows and Apple and Linux itself in perspective in terms of software development. 
So hang on, and I hope you enjoy. When you look at writing code in a Linux environment, the common perception and the image that shows up in most people's minds is that you got these hackers using a command line and it's a black screen with amber or lime green text streaming down like the matrix and you're in there trying to crack the NSA or something. But the reality is, is that the majority of software developers in Linux, in my opinion, they're doing something a little bit more ordinary. The workflow and the tools that you have in Linux, they're visual. The command line is there as a way of getting past any of the limitations in visual tools. Because whether you are in Microsoft Windows and you're using Notepad, Visual Studio with its text editor, or you're in a Mac system running an Apple operating system and you're using Xcode, one thing that's common across all of these environments is you have a file explorer, right? You have a way of navigating through files visually. You can see folders and files. And all code exists in text. Text is the currency. It is the thread that links all these different systems together. Whether we're talking about the tens of thousands of servers at Google that runs Google.com and all the Google applications that people deal with, such as Google Drive, Gmail, etc., or Amazon.com where you're shopping online, or Microsoft Azure itself. We talk about Netflix, Netflix and all the streaming. Everything I just named is driven by Linux. And so when we're talking about visual applications, visual applications, programs that run right on the desktop, has traditionally been seen as the forte of Microsoft. But as you can see here, visual applications is pretty much the forte of the technical community in general. It's a matter of depth and finesse. And in the Linux environment, you have all variety from the most basic and primitive or rough around the edges to the most refined, as you would find in KDE primarily and GNOME secondarily. And so when you think about the things you do to write software in Microsoft Windows, and I point out Microsoft Windows because I spent just about 20 years writing software in Microsoft Windows, and I am not done yet because the people that normally hire me and employ me to write software, they want software written in Microsoft Windows using Microsoft Visual Studio. So I specialized in that, and I'm an expert in that. But I'm also pretty proficient in Linux. And what I see in Linux is the same things. And indeed, the background and experience I've had in Microsoft Windows has shown me that these things are the same. I have Firefox over here where I can scroll through the history of the projects I've done. I can do the exact same thing in Microsoft Edge and Windows 11. So there is no difference at a fundamental level. User friendliness, it's the same. The only complaints you see about user friendliness is a lack of familiarity. We don't know how to do something in Microsoft Windows. So for that moment, it ceases to be user friendly. We don't know how to do something in Ubuntu or Fedora. For that moment, it ceases to be user friendly. So user friendliness is a catch-all word for muscle memory. So when we look at how to navigate these environments and build software, we have the same mechanisms to do those things across Apple, Windows, and Linux environments. So the question then becomes, 
why use Linux when we see that Windows is more prevalent on the desktop? The opposite is true, of course, when we're talking about the servers, the Android phones, tablets, and routers, etc., etc. All those devices far outnumber Windows 100 to 1. But it still begs the question, why would any software developer use Linux as their daily driver as their desktop for building software? Well, if you're going to be one of the top developers in Silicon Valley, you're going to use Linux or an Apple environment anyway because that's going to be a more uh, streamlined gateway into the server infrastructure at google.com, at amazon.com, apple.com, and Netflix, etc., right? But if you are working in a business where you're doing business applications for a small to mid-sized business or even a large business that's not a technology company per se, then in most cases you're going to be using Microsoft Windows. So who I'm really talking about are the ISVs, the independent software vendors, independent software developers. You don't necessarily have to be a vendor. So what we see here is that we have tools for diagnosing memory, for getting in depth with how the system operates. We have tools for running multiple operating systems at the same time. Here I'm running Debian in its own environment. That could just as well be Microsoft Windows 7 in its own environment running within a Linux environment, right? And if I wanted to set up some type of scheme where I wanted to run Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows 98 SE, Windows Millennium Edition, Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, and a Windows 11, and a Windows Server, all the Windows Server versions, all the Windows NT versions, I could do that with this scheme here, still be in the Linux environment, and do it with far greater finesse and fidelity than I may say have in a Windows environment. Because I have greater resource control here. I have greater ability to move and set up and compartmentalize these types of things. So I'm pretty much answering the question by saying that the tools in Linux are greater in number. Any one tool may not be the best tool in the world, though some are, but you have a greater number of tools and you have a much broader community of people that build these tools. So these tools may not always be the most polished tools compared to the commercial counterparts. But the commercial environment itself constrains by definition what you're going to do because nobody is going to give you the secret of how to be better than they are. So if you want to write the next AutoCAD, you want to write the next Photoshop, you want to write the next best operating system, well, Linux is your best shot in town to be able to do that. Because if you want to go to the next level beyond what is being spoon-fed to you over decades in terms of technological evolution and innovation, then you're going to find that the tools, the community, and the participants in the Linux community at large are going to be more in your favor. So as we move around these tools and we see what is possible and we think about the tens of thousands of people in universities and research labs and elsewhere who assist with the cultivation of Linux technology, then we see that the advantage is in the Linux environment.